Hey, welcome back to 2DG. We've got another episode of Trash Talk. So we're coming at you live. We're pre recorded with. What do we got? Miller High Life. Miller High Life. The High Life. The High Life. In 16 ounces because he always complains when I get bigger. Limited edition design. Yeah, it's got the old school. What is it? Witch or whatever it was. Floating on a, some lady yeah. sitting on some hops and barley and wheat and, and a paper airplane. Paper airplane. And I don't really get it. Because the standard of quality is a paper airplane. Uh, it says Benny Gold, though. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that is. So, uh, High Life, when it was originally brewed, uh, was supposed to be, and I believe it's the slogan is the champagne of beers. Uh, so it was Miller's top quality product, and then as the years wore on and uh, so yeah, so this beer, like I said, was originally brewed to be top class, and then as time went on, flavors changed, money, whatever. It's now down to their economy brand. Uh, interesting. Our mantras, stay gold in pursuit of the high life, are reminders to follow your dreams and live a rich life. It's kind of foreshadowing. Very Just you foreshadowing. Wait. So, let's get this open. Let's crack it open. Beautiful. I'm going to tilt this. Um, the only reason being is because this is going to be super foamy. I hope you can see through that as well as I can. <laughs> Give you a little more. I don't want to hog it all. You can if you want. No, I wouldn't want to do that to you. Trying to see if they can get the fizz. <laughs> so, there it is. The high life. Alright, it's coming in paler than pale. Um, yeah, it's really light. Yeah, uh, lighter than straw. Like we said, if you put uh, straw colored beer and watered it down. Um, nice half a finger of pillowy white head. Uh, it's sticking around a little bit longer. Um, it is very, very carbonated, yeah, though. Yeah, but it is a good-looking head, though. Yeah. I mean, for yeah. what it is, I just, to me, screams ads <laughs> down, but whatever. Let's <laughs> get in those. All right. Um, you're getting that kind of, like, faint malt wet cardboard type smell, um, but you're getting a lot of, not a lot, you're getting a decent amount of the fruit esters coming off there from the yeast. I'll agree, but if you dig deep, you get that stale barroom floor mm -hmm. smell. Yep. Yeah, you walk into a bar, this is what you smell. Yeah, it's all, the only thing missing is cigarette smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, there's not a ton there, but I'm kind of shocked that there's as much as there is. There was a lot more of the fruity esters than yeah. I expected. Yeah. That's uh, it's taster. Okay. Um. Ooh, wow. I want to say, I, I believe they use corn syrup in this. Uh, and I think that's kind of the story with a lot of the cheaper beers. Wow. That being said, I'm not going to say I'm blown away, but my expectations were about way down here, and yeah. there, it's up there. I, I have to admit that as well, I, um, and this is not April Fool's. No, yeah, don't worry, we're not doing a steel reserve on you. Um, you do get a ton of like the crackery, biscuity, pilsner uh, malt. And it um, comes on, comes back early. strong, it, yeah. and uh, persistent, it doesn't fade quick. Yeah, no, it starts real early, I'd say probably... Uh, Front quarter, uh, or yeah, front quarter of the tongue, and then last all the way back, and it comes up like you said. You get a little pop from the uh, high carbonation in there. You get a little bit of the fruity ester in there, but a lot of this is dominated by that. Malt um, I'll say flavor. the front front quarter of your tongue at least is is dominated by the carbonated pop and the uh, and the uh, fruity esters. But yeah, the, the the cracker comes back charging hard, and it's actually pleasant for. I'm getting what it is. I'm getting a little bit of corny. It's almost a yeah. popcorn. Yeah. Say the first drink, I didn't recognize it as much, but the second one, I just took. You, yeah, you can definitely tell there's some adjunct in there, mm -hmm. which we do anyway. But as 
far as bad beers go, though, it's actually not. It's not that bad. Yeah. Um, I'm curious though. To I'm see not getting any metallic flavors right yet. Which or is yeah, which like is that. very uh, surprising. Okay, I didn't say that. So we'll pull it up on Rate Beer. Or we're gonna anyway. Um, the style is pale lager um, or American adjunct, whatever you want to call it. Same thing. Um, uh, brewed by Miller Brewing Company or Miller Coors, as they're called now. Um, the ABV on this is 4.6, so it's actually higher than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be right at four flat or maybe four one. Um, and then if you care, it's got 138 calories. Um, Would it get for reading? Yeah, I'm dumb. Uh, okay, so style, I give it a nine. Uh, this is on a hundred scale. Overall, they gave it a one. I'm gonna say that might be being a little harsh, but yeah. uh, what are you gonna go for? Pale lager, adjunct lager. Well, unfortunately, I'm trying to draw back what I rated some of the other ones at, but I'm kind of coming up blank for the most part. I know which ones I rated high and low, but I'm going to give this one a solid three and a half on my scale. For style? Yeah. I think they did a good job for this level of beer. Um, style, nine. Um, I think this is right on par with probably the best trash talk that we've had, which has been Coors to this point. Banquet. The Banquet, yes, excuse me. Uh, have we done Light? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Anyway, so yeah, Coors Banquet. Uh, <laughs> for me, yeah, this is... Yeah, uh, we might have, actually. Yeah, we'll find out. It didn't impress us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it it had a lot more than, like I said, than I expected from it. It tastes better than a lot of them. They're in the same style. So, yeah, pleasantly surprised. Uh, overall, overall, I'm gonna give it a four. Actually, I'm gonna go up a little bit because uh, so this be the highest one. Yeah, I think I think this is the one where if I'm stuck in a dive bar, <laughs> if I'm in the average Joe's bar, I might just grab this. I actually, would you do a picture of it? Uh, that'd be rough. <laughs> <laughs> I could do a picture of Bud, but but you're really rating this higher than Bud. Bud's my go-to. I believe that was in the video no, I'm not saying from I'm back in the day. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could do a whole picture. I don't know if I could do a whole picture of Bud anymore, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I could probably do a picture of this, so yeah, I'm going to okay. stick with that. Four. Um, I'm going to go three and a half. Uh, this is the highest rated uh, bad beer that I've had. Uh, I mean, of, trash talk. Yeah, part of a trash talk series. Um, yeah, three and a half. Uh, it's got... <laughs> a lot more flavor than I thought this was going to have. I agree. Um, despite the fact I know it's made with adjuncts and corn syrup, which I don't like, um, there's a decent amount of flavor in there. Um, I could easily do a picture of this. This will probably be if we're going to a crappy bar uh, and they have this on tap. I'll pick this over any of the other crappy beers uh, that so they probably have. But it's so far, yeah. we still got a long way to go. A million to go. Um, yeah, pleasantly surprised though. Um, yeah, and, and I think the, this is a good showcase of styles changing. And it's often been said in at least a couple documentaries that American beers used to have flavor. And they were diverse. And then in the 60s, as companies were swallowed up by the bigger companies, around the 60s, flavors, tastes changed in the country, and they developed the garbage that you get now. Uh, this is a good reminder that there was some flavor. I mean, I'm sure this is not the same as the, yeah. you know, 50s recipe, but at least you know that there are flavors, you know, that you can get. Yeah, so. we, we don't want to start our um, old school series with this either. Um, it's it's not quite what we're going for. I hope. <laughs> yeah, this one's still hugely commercially distributed, um, whereas the old school styles that we're Style. Old school beers that we're gonna do are kind of regional now, um, so that's why this is still on trash talk. See, my understanding, Rainier is gonna be available again. Really? Which is West Coast, of course, yeah. but it might be an interesting old style beer. It's actually brewed by I forget who now, but yeah. anyway, uh, like, comment, subscribe, two DG. Follow our Twitter. You'll be apprised of all the updates. Uh, we like to tweet out other information as well. Yeah. So. Awards. Uh, beer festivals, things of that nature. Yeah, keep up with it. Yeah. Uh, as always, if you have suggestions on what we should do next, we'll take them. If you got beer you want to send or trade, we'll take that. Um, 
keep watching the descriptions below. We will have our trade sheet. We haven't created our full list yet, so we need to work on that. But uh, we have a lot of duplicates of some really good beers, so we'd be willing to trade for some really good beer. <laughs> Do you, G? Hey, we'll see you later.